Hello everyone. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Gul, for a wonderful session. Now we are moving on academic session five by Dr. Dragon. He is from Serbia. He is a member of KTI Research Committee and a frequent presenter at congresses and at the KTI Symposium. He has been an active physiotherapist in Belgrade since 1990 and is proficient in a range of therapeutic disciplines and teaching areas including shiatsu, fascia, myofascial release and treating discordural conflict conditions. He trained in kinesiotaping in 2005 and served as translator and lab assistant for courses in Serbia starting in 2007. Dragon has been a certified kinesiotaping instructor since 2008. Thank you Dragon, over to you now. A big thank you to Dr. Ankit for managing to organize this kind of uh, event. Now, on the beginning, I'm just gonna uh, give you a short introduction of who I am and what I'm doing, so you can uh, get a little picture of uh, my background. Uh, my name is Dragan. I'm a PT from Belgrade, Serbia, and uh, after finishing uh, high school and college for PTs, I immediately st immediately started to work at uh, Orthopedic Surgeon Hospital and uh, I worked there for a few years and uh, that's where I uh, gained uh, my uh, experience uh, for treating uh, trauma in uh, early stage. Later on I uh, finished uh, some uh, courses uh, in uh, different uh, techniques uh, to treat uh, body manually like um, Yumeiho which is a Japanese manual therapy and um, and uh, also uh, I finished the uh, International Shiatsu School and uh, during that uh, finishing school for Shiatsu um, I uh, started to learn more about uh, fascia and uh, its significance and also in 2008 I finished the uh, Terabend Academy where I was um, learning about uh, significance of uh, proprioceptors and about uh, proprioceptive, uh, proprioceptive training uh, about, about Kinesio, I uh, first heard in 2003 and uh, in 2005 I started uh, to um, educate myself concerning Kinesio taping and in 2008 I finished my uh, education in uh, United States for uh, Kinesio taping instructor and uh, since then I am uh, teaching courses uh, from Kinesio taping. Apart from uh, all that, I also finished training in uh, craniosacral osteopathy and uh, biodynamic craniosacral oste osteopathy and uh, I finished uh, uh, first level uh, of uh, I finished first level of um, visceral manipulation uh, training. So let's uh, start with the presentations. The, um, the topic of uh, the presentation is treating fractures and open wounds with kinesio taping. Uh, what is specific about this that is that a um, few of these cases happen personally to me. So uh, it is only when uh, you meet the obstacle that uh, you can uh, uh, advance, uh, which means that uh, the problems that I personally had. Uh, were forcing me to uh, think uh, the ways to uh, overcome them and that's how I uh, figured out a uh, few of the um, applications uh, that uh, you will be able to see. So first uh, case was a traumatic injury. Um, uh, of, um, first case is a traumatic injury of the left elbow. Uh, with the radial bone uh, fracture on two spots here and here the, the arrows point out and uh, it was without dislocation so uh, immediately following the injury uh, sharp pain in the elbow was present but uh, at that moment uh, full range of motion in the elbow was possible and uh, so that made me think that uh, there is no fracture in the elbow. Of course, uh, 30 minutes later, uh, there is still presence of a sharp, strong pain uh, in the region of the head of the radius, 
but uh, unfortunately now, uh, so 30 minutes after the initial injury, there is heavy elbow swelling and there is no possibility to move uh, the elbow joint in any direction. So it's stuck, like we can say, it's blocked on the 90 degrees uh, angle. So luckily, uh, I always, when I travel, and at that moment I was out of the country, uh, whenever I travel, I carry with me uh, Kinesio tech tape, and um, so uh, we arranged that uh, Kinesio fingerprint uh, was applied around the elbow uh, in a web pattern. So on this image here, you see uh, we try to mimic the pattern. Uh, because uh, there was much more swelling in the elbow than on this picture. Uh, so this picture is the original picture that was taken uh, the day after the injury. So this is the original, one of the original tapes. And uh, so the tapes were um, applied uh, on the front side, on the back side and uh, on, the, um, uh, on the side of the um, elbow. But uh, the problem was that uh, there was no possibility to do the movement. So how uh, did we manage to create wrinkles? Well, we managed to create wrinkles because uh, uh, the tension that was applied to the kinesio text tape was zero and uh, manually we stretched the tissues. And so uh, after the tape application, uh, in the next 10 hours, there was still presence of a strong, heavy pain. Uh, but after the tape application, the swelling wasn't increasing, which is a big thing. Uh, and uh, also, uh, during the uh, night, I applied a cold shower a few times during uh, the night. And in the morning, uh, the situation changed. Uh, in a better way, uh, which means that uh, I didn't had uh, while well, the elbow was in the 90 degrees uh, um, angle position, uh, I had no pain and I was able to do uh, 30 degrees of range of motion from 90 degrees to 120 degrees without pain and uh, so it allowed me to be functional to a certain extent. Uh, so I had only 30 degrees of range of motion in the elbow and I wasn't able to do full supination and pronation. Uh, carrying weight uh, in my hand was not possible. So uh, for the next 30 days I was doing only active movement uh, till the point of uh, pain. So I was just uh, holding to the range of motion that has no pain. And every seven days, every seven days I was changing the, the tape on the elbow uh, with the main function to decrease the swelling. So um, somebody may ask why I was changing the, the tapes every seven days. Uh, well, I was changing them because uh, as uh, I was gradually um, getting more and more range of motion in the elbow, uh, so with that increased range of motion, when I do the next application, I was uh, able to get more wrinkles uh, with the tapes, and that was a um, uh, benefit. Was a big benefit to uh, decrease more uh, this um, swelling that was uh, in the elbow region. So apart from uh, applying um, Kinesio text tape. Uh, I was also using elastic bandage two times a day for 60 minutes uh, in a um, elevated position of the uh, hand and I was also using a mild pressure on carpal bones to facilitate bone healing. What does this mild pressure mean is that, uh, that um, it means that uh, um, I was try I would usually uh, straighten the elbow uh, uh, to the degree that it was possible for me and then uh, I was uh, just gradually leaning on my uh, carpal bones. The idea was that um, this uh, longitudinal uh, pressure 
would be a stimulation for uh, bone healing. So I was also doing uh, static contractions um, uh, of flexors and extensors, very mild contractions, but to keep the muscles active. Uh, and I was doing them in a different uh, position, joint positions. So uh, after 30 days, the swelling was gone, and uh, mm, but I was still not able to carry weight larger than one and a half kilograms. Um, just to let you know that it was only after uh, five days that uh, I uh, was actually when I did the, the x-ray I was uh, aware that uh, there is a fracture of the head of the radius and uh, so at that moment so it's five days after the initial injury um, I uh, had two choices two choices uh, go to the doctor and um, apply the immobilization with the plaster which I knew that uh, would create um, contracture of the elbow joint and uh, I would not be able to do any manual treatment while I have uh, my elbow in uh, immobilization so I decided to do the other thing to try and um, uh, fix this problem without uh, immobilization by plaster so I was just using uh, Kinesio Tex tape and I was of course paying a lot of attention about what which movements uh, I am gonna do so after one month uh, the Kinesio Tex tape was applied based uh, on muscle testing and muscle testing showed that uh, biceps brachii and brachioradialis need to be taped distal to proximal as you can see in uh, these pictures and uh, also correction uh, technique was applied directly over the head of the radius uh, to um, create the effect of stabilization and fixation and also I was uh, I continued to do static contractions uh, of the muscles uh, surrounding elbow joint so uh, during next uh, uh, totally uh, during these four months uh, of my rehabilitation uh, kinesio taping was uh, used based on muscle testing uh, in um, conjunction with exercises and uh, no immobilization was uh, applied so after four months i was able to load full weight on uh, elbow or should i say on my hand and uh, at the end to carry weight and uh, to uh, lean on my uh, my hand and also at the end of uh, six months uh, i regained full range of motion and functionality so once again i need to point out that uh, the bone healed with no immobilization applied so the second case is uh, how can we treat kinesio taping uh, or how can we treat open wounds with kinesio taping so uh, here we can see on the picture that uh, proximal interphalangeal joint uh, of the index finger was injured with a swiss pocket knife and the injury was uh, very serious because the cut uh, went all the way through joint cartilage and uh, the cut was from uh, here all the way through here so all this uh, tissue here was just uh, when it was cut off was holding on a small piece of skin here so at that moment uh, you gotta think fast and uh, i had two options either cut remove all these tissues that was uh, originally cut or put it back and put the bandage so uh, i did decided to go for the second version i put the tissues that were cut off i put it back here and uh, i bandaged my finger so uh, all this happened uh, in the afternoon so i left uh, the bandage on the wound uh, all night and in the morning I took out the bandages and uh, so this is the picture uh, from the mo next morning 
So there is a big swelling of the whole finger as a reaction to the trauma that, that happened. And so I decided to, uh, and I was only able to do 20 degrees of uh, flexion in the uh, proximal interphalangella joint. And uh, it was accompanied uh, with a sharp pain. So I decided to uh, try to do something about the swelling uh, with the Kinesio Tex Tape. So fingerprint uh, Kinesio Tex Tape was applied uh, on the dorsal and uh, volar side of the finger and um, also uh, along with Kinesio Tex Tape I was using uh, specific uh, uh, fascia exercises to uh, increase the mobility uh, or should I say range of motion in my proximal interphalangular, interphalangular joint. So uh, what was specific about these exercises is that uh, I would uh, try to flex my finger uh, till the point of uh, where I feel the slight pain and I would hold continuous contraction in that position for three minutes. Then I would go to uh, opposite direction which is extension and uh, I would hold my finger in that position uh, also for three minutes. The intensity of contraction was 30% uh, of my maximum uh, uh, strength contraction. So I was doing it uh, every 30 minutes. And uh, after second day uh, of applied Kinesio Tex Tape I was able from uh, only possibility to do 20 degrees uh, range of motion I uh, uh, reached 90 degrees of flexion and uh, at that point uh, I regained the functionality to do manual treatments so uh, I was able to do my uh, job and uh, uh, on the day 7 which is uh, 5 days after uh, this um, I um, reached maximum joint flexion in the proximal interphalangeal joint. So the only time when I felt pain during uh, flexion and extension was at uh, the end uh, range of motion of flexion and uh, extension. So after three weeks uh, uh, from injury um, the cut wound was healing, but um, in the exact uh, area of the injury, I had no sensitivity in the injured tissue, and uh, the tissue itself was uh, thicker than the surrounding skin. And when I do a total extension in proximal interphalangeal joint, uh, no wrinkles were showing uh, up. So uh, when the wound healed, uh, I applied. I was able then to apply Kinesio fingerprint, uh, Kinesio text tape fingerprint uh, directly over the scar tissue, with uh, the intention to separate uh, tissue layers and to gradually get the wrinkles on the skin. So uh, tapes were applied in a period of uh, four weeks. And uh, I uh, got wrinkles, uh, so wrinkles were visible, but also uh, my sensitivity uh, in the area of scar tissue uh, was back. So concerning these open wounds, uh, I regained full functionality of index finger. Uh, next case is... Uh, Again, fracture, uh, traumatic injury of the right distal interphalangeal joint happened on a volleyball match, and uh, after uh, X-ray, diagnosed was a avulsional fracture of distal phalang of the little finger. So, at the moment when the injury happened, uh, I thought that it's not a fracture. And uh, so what was present was uh, very sharp pain and uh, swelling and uh, also visible hematoma in the nail region.
So two hours after injury, um, Kinesio Web application was applied to decrease swelling and uh, also immobilization was uh, applied uh, with a piece of uh, plastic and uh, elastic bandage. Uh, but after two days, um, Kinesio text tape uh, was uh, needed to be removed uh, because um, I had uh, stronger pain and um, also uh, there was hypersensitivity in the region of the fracture. So I tried uh, for next few days uh, to just use the immobilization, but uh, you know, when you have an uh, immobilized finger, uh, you cannot find normally because um, your proprioception is uh, uh, not normal anymore. So I thought, how can I try to regain my proprioception and keep the immobilization? And then I, the idea came to try to use kinesio tape, a uh, certain correctional technique, to keep uh, the segments in a correct position and uh, that's what you see here and um, the applied uh, tension was 100 percent from here to here and also uh, here 100 percent was used because the i uh, the purpose of this tape was to try and press this uh, fractured fragment uh, on a correct uh, position and I did uh, regain the full proprioceptive uh, information in uh, injured segment and I was uh, even able to uh, bend uh, or to do flexion in the proximal interphalangeal joint without compromising uh, the position of the distal interphalangeal joint. But uh, since the tension that was used here was 100%, after seven days of uh, wearing uh, this correction uh, taping, uh, it was too much for skin to bear, so uh, it became very unpleasant and uh, I had to remove these uh, tapes that were uh, here. So in the meantime I consulted with the orthopedic surgeon and the plastic surgeon and uh, the orthopedic surgeon suggested uh, immobilization and I said, of course, yes, they applied the uh, immobilization, but uh, it was applied too tightly. So uh, my um, pains become even more bigger in the regi region of the injury and uh, the skin changed color. So it was clear to me that uh, there is a stasis or should I say that the blood flow is... Um, uh, compromised, so I uh, removed the uh, mobilization. So then, uh, also plastic surgeon that was consulted, uh, he suggested the fixation with metal needle, and uh, it was applied. Uh, let's say three and a half weeks after the um, initial injury, and uh, I kept it for the next uh, six weeks. So. Uh, here you can see uh, how the finger looks uh, after the, the surgery and uh, so after the surgery I had very hard pains and swelling. Um, why I had hard pains? Uh, well one of the reasons was that uh, as you can see on the picture here there is also present uh, subluxation of the distal uh, phalanx and uh, you can see on the picture uh, bef the, of before uh, surgery that there is no subluxation. So that can be one reason. And also the needle uh, probably injured one of the blood vessels and there was very big swelling uh, in the region of the distal phalanx and the uh, middle phalanx. And uh, unfortunately, first two days after the surgery, I couldn't do anything about uh, swelling and uh, pain because the finger was bandaged. But after two days, um, the, so I went to check in on the surgeon and the uh, bandages were uh, removed. Uh, so I was able to uh, then uh, use the uh, Creo massage to decrease the pain and also use the um, elastic bandage to 
um, decrease the swelling of the finger. I was not able to use the kinesio taping uh, because uh, there was big sensitivity of the skin. Even mild touch on the skin was very uh, painful. So I was uh, forced to use uh, elastic bandage. But uh, what I didn't like was uh, how my finger looked uh, when I take off the elastic bandage and this uh, image, uh, second image from the top shows uh, how the skin is after taking off the elastic bandage. So I was not able to use the Kinesio text tape, but I was thinking how can I uh, use the elastic properties of the Kinesio text tape without actually um, um, uh, using, uh, uh, adhering the tape, Kinesio text tape to the skin. So then the idea came to create uh, something that I called Kinesio uh, sleeve. And uh, the picture that is uh, uh, third from the top shows uh, how my finger looks uh, when I take off the uh, elastic sleeve that you see on the bottom picture. So you can see the difference in the skin wrinkles uh, uh, with the elastic sleeve and with the Kinesio sleeve. What is important here is that uh, so kinesio teeth, uh, sleeve I can I just uh, pull it uh, to the top of the finger and I take it off and uh, it's important uh, to know how to make it and uh, of course uh, how to do the right measuring uh, to have uh, the appropriate uh, elasticity forces that this uh, sleeve is uh, creating. So this is how elastic sleeve uh, looks and uh, so it's made out of two tapes. They don't have to be different colors. I just uh, used different colors so that uh, it's easier for you to figure out uh, how it was uh, made. So uh, this uh, red piece of tape is uh, adhered to this uh, blue piece of tape. Then uh, it's wrapped around the healthy finger so pay attention it's wrapped around the healthy finger because that is our goal we want that uh, um, amount of elasticity to uh, work on the injured finger or swollen finger and then uh, this part is just uh, when we wrap the tape around finger this part is uh, um, used to uh, glue the, these two pieces uh, together so here you can see how the this uh, kinesio sleeve looks uh, before actual um, implementation on the finger. So, uh, aside of using a kinesio sleeve, uh, I tried using a splint that you can see here, but uh, I had uh, had it modified because uh, this opening that you see here is not on the original splint. I made it so that I can put this uh, piece of rubber uh, and uh, try to make it uh, create a compressional force on the fractured segment. So just with the idea to uh, try to increase the bone healing. And uh, actually I uh, tried to use it but I wasn't satisfied with its uh, effect. So uh, here you can co co you have comparison of uh, using kinesio sleeve uh, versus kinesio uh, versus uh, not kinesio but versus uh, splint. So uh, if we talk about uh, uh, reducing swelling and uh, better skin wrinkles and uh, better proprioceptive information, then uh, kinesio sleeve uh, is better thing. But if we talk about uh, providing uh, protection from external forces, like when you hit your finger in uh, something, then uh, Kinesio Splint uh, provided uh, better protection. Uh, but uh, so only when I go outside of the house, I would uh, use uh, some time a Kinesio Splint, but most of the time I was using a Kinesio uh, Sleeve. Also, um, I used a low frequency magnet that I held uh, two times a day for one hour 
and uh, I also uh, applied comfrey gel two times uh, per day. So uh, six weeks after the sur surgery, uh, the needle was uh, extracted, and uh, X-ray sh X-ray showed uh, that uh, the bone started with the healing, and. Um, one month later, I also did another uh, uh, check x-ray and it showed the complete bone healing. Of course, the problem that um, I had later was a big contracture of the distal interfalcal joint, but uh, uh, initially, uh, since uh, I had problem of uh, these two uh, segments healing, um, that was the priority to for these parts to heal and then later we would deal on with the contractor. So in all these three cases uh, kinesio taping was applied during different phases uh, from early trauma phase to later phases of recovery and uh, in case number one which was the elbow injury uh, in the early fracture phase uh, the kinesio taping proved as a very efficient modality to stop swelling and decrease pain and of course increase range of motion. In later stages of recovery uh, it was helpful in decreasing tensional forces in the region of the fracture that, was, uh, that were caused by uh, elbow flexor muscle groups. In case 2 uh, fractures, uh, which is the injury of the little finger, it was very efficient in uh, replacement for immobilization uh, for seven days and uh, at the same time it allowed free range of motion in proximal joint and the full proprioceptive information. Uh, kinesio sleeve proved as a very effective to decrease swelling in a situation where uh, uh, we have a hypersensitivity of the skin but we want to uh, use the benefit of the elastic forces that uh, kinesio text tape creates. Uh, in the case of the open wound application, uh, application uh, of uh, kinesio tape, uh, text tape close to the wound helped in the faster wound healing and uh, very much helped in getting functional range of motion in uh, proximal interfalgal joint. Later, uh, it also helped uh, to regain sensitivity to the injured tissues and uh, mobility of the underlying tissue layers of the injured part of the tissue. So, here we have another patient. This is not me, uh, but it's my sister that uh, had this accident. So, uh, she injured little finger of her right leg and X-ray showed a fracture of the proximal phalanx with very big dislocation, as you can see right here. So the orthopedic surgeon uh, performed the reposition of the bone and did the fixation with the cotton wool ball and athletic tape, which is actually the classic uh, orthopedic uh, fixation uh, when the segments are repositioned uh, and that's classical orthopedic reposition for this uh, kind of injury. So patient was advised to apply elevation and uh, crea pack. Uh, immediately uh, pain and swelling were present in the area of the injury. So second day after the injury uh, athletic tape uh, and uh, this cotton wool immobilization uh, were removed and the immobilization with kinesio taping was applied uh, which you can see here and application to remove swelling in the area was also uh, applied so uh, why was this uh, piece of tape uh, put here instead of cotton wool because um, i wanted her to be able to do uh, cold showers few times a day and if you have a cotton wool piece there uh, if you wet it it will uh, lose its functionality and its functionality is to keep this uh, fracture to keep this fracture piece uh, of bone in a correct position so uh, 
this piece of, uh, piece of uh, piece here is made of um, uh, rolled uh, kinesio text tape and uh, it was uh, uh, very good because uh, when uh, you do the cold shower and uh, it will uh, dry but it will not lose its uh, form and functionality and uh, so uh, very fast after this application um, uh, there was a decreasing uh, of pain and uh, swelling and the patient regained the ability to walk without pain and uh, of course she was uh, um, in a possibility uh, to use uh, cold showers uh, of foot uh, multiple times during a day uh, which is very significant because uh, the day or date of the injury was uh, uh, 6th of June and at that time we had very uh, warm weather in uh, our country and uh, that heat uh, wasn't uh, very uh, good for uh, this injury and for the swelling. So 48 hours, hours later a uh, different application for swelling was applied and modification of the original uh, immobilization application was uh, also applied and uh, both were very successful uh, during next three weeks uh, both of these applications were reapplied every five days so after the third week kinesio taping immobilization was uh, removed and the patient was able to stand on her fingers uh, since uh, it was hot summer period the swelling of the foot was uh, still present so for next 25 days application for swelling had to be applied and after uh, 45 45th day uh, swelling was gone and patient regained full functionality next case uh, is a patient of mine uh, so in january 2019 patient injured knee while skiing so x-ray showed the fracture of the plateau of the tibia that was uh, later treated uh, surgically with uh, osteosynthesis. Uh, patient was immediately after surgery discharged discharge home uh, and uh, we were lucky that he was uh, discharged with uh, orthosis immobilization of the leg. Uh, why were we lucky? Because um, he was allowed to shortly remove orthosis uh, while exercising and we started with the exercises on the second day after the surgery uh, for all the exercises proprioceptic training uh, exercises uh, were applied to increase stabilization of the and the strength of the musculature of the hip knee and the ankle and uh, what is important to say that uh, uh, the flexion of the knee was contraindicated or should I say forbidden for the next uh, 45 days. So, uh, apart from doing proprioceptive uh, training exercises, uh, fascia bodywork technique was applied uh, to increase the mobility of the tissues above and below knee area. And uh, as the wound healed and um, uh, bandages were taken off, uh, I was aware that there is a hematoma in the um, region of the um, backside of the of the thigh, backside of the popliteal fossa, and uh, also there was a present uh, swelling uh, above the in the region of the kneecap. So kinesio taping was uh, applied. Uh, in this region, this uh, region of the backside of the of the um, oh. upper part of the thigh, uh, fingerprint tape was uh, applied with um, uh, paper of uh, tension, and the tissues were since there is no flexion uh, in the knee, tissues were stretched manually by a physical therapist, and uh, so. Here below, you can see the area um, before taping. Uh, this is the taping, and uh, 
48 hours after taping you can see that uh, wherever the tape was applied there is a decrease of uh, hematoma so as i said before uh, kinesio taping fan application was applied in the region of the uh, upper and middle uh, part of the um, patella uh, paper of tension was applied and again uh, tissues were stretched uh, manually by the hand of the therapist. So uh, after 48 hours we uh, I, uh, took off the uh, uh, kinesiotex tape and uh, um, reapplied the tape in both uh, here and uh, also applied tape uh, in the popliteal fossa and uh, pictures he here uh, show um, how the area uh, looks 48 hours after taking off the second taping so the effects of the kinesio taping were clearly very visible and um, also uh, the tape uh, here on the knee region was reapplied and uh, you can see it here uh, with the orthosis that uh, the patient was uh, able to uh, wear orthosis, uh, the tapes on, they, uh, he didn't have any problems. So uh, after uh, two weeks uh, <clears throat> when, the, uh, <clears throat> when the skin uh, in the area where the screws were applied uh, was, was healed, uh, the patient had uh, pain in that uh, regi region where the uh, wound was and uh, so corrective application, space correction was applied uh, in the entry point of the screws and uh, tension applied was uh, 30 percent and uh, I was using a fingerprint tape because uh, the intention was to um, decrease the possibility to uh, irritate skin and also because it affects uh, the um, layers of the tissues that are more closer to the skin surface. So after 45 days the bone healed and this is the control x-ray and the orthopedic surgeon allowed 20% uh, weight bearing and he allowed knee flexion and uh, immediately uh, that first day which is the uh, 45th day after the injury but that's the first day uh, when uh, the patient was allowed to flex the knee uh, the patient was allowed uh, was uh, um, um, able to do 95 degrees of knee flexion on the first day uh, and uh, that significantly improved the recovery uh, because uh, only after 10 days after after day 45 uh, we got full knee flexion and um, those of you that uh, uh, work with uh, adhesions and contractors especially with the knee injuries and uh, uh, with the patient that uh, patients that have a uh, uh, knee in a prolonged mobiliza immobilization know very well uh, that the main problem that uh, we as PTs face is the contracture of the knee and the uh, impossibility um, of the patient to do knee flexion. So uh, in this specific case uh, I can uh, say that uh, uh, proprioceptive training, fascia body work techniques that were applied uh, every day along with kinesio text tapes uh, that were reapplied uh, every five days um, uh, sped up the recovery uh, from the beginning and also prevented adhesions improved tissue mobility uh, decreased swelling and uh, brought patient to full functionality uh, much faster Thank you. If uh, anybody has uh, any questions or uh, wants to consult with me, this is my email and this is my uh, phone number. Can you on live? Okay. So can I start uh, answering? Yes. yes.
Okay, so first question was um, uh, which one is more effective, taping or plaster in fracture? Because taping we have to change the tape again again and the plaster uh, can last longer. So first of all, um, my um, case studies uh, or my personal experience is just to show people that sometimes, based on your personal evaluation, we can use kinesio taping in conjunction uh, or to treat fractures. But that is not to say don't use plaster, use kinesio taping. The benefit of uh, not having plaster but uh, maybe using the kinesio tape uh, to help body heal from the fracture is uh, that uh, there is a better blood flow with kinesio taping uh, secondly we can treat the uh, tissues starting from skin uh, to down to deeper tissues we can treat them and mobilize them and by that we prevent adhesions that uh, if not treated, uh, will create uh, contractions. So, um, in some cases, of course, we need plaster because the function of the plaster is to keep the bones in a correct position so that uh, they can uh, heal uh, perfectly or so that they can heal. Uh, but in uh, these few cases that I had, uh, so in the elbow case, uh, of course, I uh, didn't have plaster because I didn't want to have a uh, elbow contracture. But I was, uh, I needed to be very careful with every move that, that I do with my body. So I was doing every move very slowly and uh, I was uh, uh, staying in a just pain-free range of motion. So uh, the swelling was a big problem and uh, so let's say that you have swelling after fracture and you have a plaster, you cannot uh, affect the swelling. So in most cases if you have plaster and swelling you will have a uh, indurated edema uh, when you take off plaster. I had a patient that had a uh, Achilles tendon rupture and he was in plaster which was uh, which is uh, quite a uh, let's say conservative uh, uh, method to treat that kind of injury and after uh, he took off plaster and came to me the tissues were very indurated which means that they were hard as a rock and uh, there was no movement of uh, tissues there was no mobility of tissues and uh, so he had no movement in the ankle joint so when he took a plaster, then I had to apply kinesio tapes to uh, soften the indurated tissues. So, uh, to answer the first uh, question, which is more effective, it depends on the patient, on his situation. And um, in my cases, <laughs> kinesio was uh, very much effective, but it depends on case to case. So, it's based on your individual um, evaluation. The point is uh, uh, learn from my experience. So the point of me sharing my cases uh, with uh, everybody is that uh, you can see the situation or fracture problem from different angle uh, because uh, the, let's say the, the problem with fracture is, is uh, we don't just need for the bone to heal, we need uh, for the blood vessels to start working again and we need to decrease uh, hematoma and swelling and we need to somehow prevent uh, muscles, uh, the neighboring muscles uh, from adhering uh, one to each other. Uh, so, Dr. Uh, Dr. Dragon, sorry to interrupt you because we are running short of time. So, okay. uh, for uh, a request, uh, other viewers, uh, they can post the comment, uh, they can post their questions in the comment section and Dr. Mm -hmm. Dragonville is going to uh, answer it uh, personally on the comment section and uh, yeah. and sorry, sorry to interrupt and uh, sorry for this because we are running short of time. So, uh, no problem, yeah. I will answer in the comment section. Yes, uh, do, do, Dr. Dragon, thank you so much uh, for your valuable information and the knowledgeable uh, co knowledgeable uh, topic. And uh, thank you so much for coming up and accepting my invitation for it. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thank you.